I met my wife, Emma Louise Page, 13, 14 years ago. About six months into uh, we actually started dating, she slipped and broke her leg and that was due to what turned out to be a tumour, a benign tumour. And so for the next ten and a half years we went through uh, a battle with cancer that eventually led unfortunately to a terminal diagnosis and um, her death on May the 19th, 2013. We'd been very private in terms of our uh, managing of the, of the illness. So not only did I lose my partner, my soulmate, I suddenly found myself dealing with a lot of the trauma of what we'd been through. Obviously, as part of that, I started to have a lot of flashbacks, a lot of really bad dreams, playing back the scenarios of uh, the time when obviously Lou died and in my mind and not being able to sleep. I, mean, I haven't really slept properly for, for nearly three years now. It kind of crept upon me um, in the first few months. It would be very easy to confuse it with grief and the sadness of losing her, but as I went on, um, it was concurrent with lots of other things and it became like being in the bottom of a pit and not being able to see any light at the top of it. It, it just enveloped every aspect of my life and my friendships, the way I couldn't deal or find any happiness in any aspect of my life and yet still going through the same pretenses of, of work and going through the processes that I did before in the hope that things would just work themselves out and obviously they can't without being able to uh, deal with that head on, and I wasn't. One psychiatrist described it as uh, pathological grief, um, and under that there's the anxiety uh, and stress attacks that, that I have, there's the PTSD, uh, severe depression, and uh, a number of other little things that go with that, the insomnia is part of that, lots of symptoms, and physical manifestations of losing diet, losing energy, not being able to concentrate and you know there's lots of little things as, as part of that but that's pretty much the umbrella diagnosis. The answer is simple, you, you know it's, it, there is no stigma attached to it, it's much more common than, than people ever think, uh, it's much more prevalent and I've learned that through being more open about it. There are a lot of people I've come across now through being more open and it surprised me what those numbers are. They say one in four it could be higher than that. I think for men, it's, it, there's a perception that it's much harder because the, the old thing of being masculine and being stronger. Um, but that again is just a myth. Um, you know, reach out, speak to a friend. Um, you'd be surprised. Uh, the warmth and empathy and understanding I've received from my male friends and, and the friends around me since I've started coming out and talking about it. You know, we actually joke about my, my illness and uh, that's a good thing. I've not experience the same barriers since I've started talking about things. I feel better for it, I feel a more open and rounded individual for, for coming out and speaking about it. Recycling's uh, in one of the ways that I deal with, uh, with things, but obviously that is well known to being a really good uh, therapy for people and I walk a lot, I've probably walked more than I've ever walked in this last year, um, but the cycling is a massive part of my life and my bike is the one that my wife bought me just before she died and, and left me and told me to go off and cycle on and it's something that I'm trying to embrace and certainly there are days when I can't do it but then when the days I do feel well enough it aids me massively in terms of my well-being.